Hello and welcome back to the Lincoln Loco 3. Hope you're all doing well today and looking forward to what is a monumental episode and a big milestone in the chapter of the Lincoln Loco 3. Today, we enter the Champions League group stage for the first time. We've got the draw coming up and then the Granada game and then we'll take on whoever we play first in the Champions League group stage, which is really, really exciting. Of course, if you're looking forward to it, make sure you do drop a like on today's video for me and subscribe to the channel if you're new around here and leave a nice comment down below for the YouTube algorithm. There are a few things to talk about in today's episode. So I think first of all, we'll start off with the two games that we've played in the league since you were last here for the transfer special and then losing 4-2 to Juventus in the European Super Cup. We started off well against Elche, a 1-0 win there with Federico Sione picking up the goal. We should have scored more, really. Uh, we didn't really take our chances particularly well, but at least we picked up three points, which was fantastic. Unfortunately, though, we did succumb to Valencia the game after losing that one, 1-0. So uh, a win and a loss to start off the new season. I think our aim this season is to try and, again, be in that top seven, try and push into the top four again, but it's going to be so, so difficult. Of course, last season we saw it was the easiest season to get top four in terms of points total that has been in this entire save so far. And we still bottled that really. So for me, I don't think we're probably quite good enough to get top four football outright, particularly if other teams start performing this season. But for me, as long as you finish in that top seven, getting European football of some sort, that's what we want. The next bit of news is to do with transfers. And whilst no one else has come into the club and no one else has left the club, Shomlea might actually leave the club. Now, we saw yesterday that we put him up for transfer, basically, because we didn't think Scott Murphy was going to leave the club. In a bit of a panic, we listed this guy. And uh, he's since turned out to be very cross that I've not let him actually leave the club. When Scott Murphy left, I took him off the transfer list or, you know, made sure I kept rejecting bids for this guy because I wanted to keep Sean Lair at the club. But it's almost worked out in our favour, right? Because because I keep rejecting bids, teams keep coming back with bigger and bigger offers. And, um, well, this is the offer that we've had come in. Osasuna put an initial bid in of 6.5, rising to uh, £9.75 million. But I negotiated it up to eight and a half million up front and then a potential value of eleven point two five million pounds down the line, which is bigger than his minimum fee release clause of eleven million pounds. And for me, if we're negotiating bids bigger than his release fee clause, then we kind of have to accept that. So actually, Sean Leia, despite him being actually a pretty decent player uh, with a fairly professional personality, which is really handy for us to choose the players, eleven million pounds is probably worth a little bit more to us right now. So uh, we're going to get that money in for him and Sean Leia should hopefully leave the club soon. A little bit of a shame to lose him, if I'm honest with you, but he's a left winger and half the season we'll probably be using five at the back, half the season we'll be using wingers and we've got Paolo Turner or Terzi if we can play on the left-hand side as well. So he probably wouldn't get all that much game time actually. Um, so here as more of a tutor than anything else, but if we can get all that money for him, we may as well try and get the money for him and get him out of the club. Particularly when we are massively overspending on wages as well. The budget is 550 and we're currently spending 615. So um, to get about 15,000 pounds back is decent on that one. So we'll go down to about 16 or 600,000 pounds. So overspending by 50,000 um, pounds. We need to make further cutbacks at some point, but hopefully all the Champions League money will help us out. As you can see, uh, we've had a load of money coming because we've got to the group stage technically now that it's all been you know, confirmed that we're in the group stage. Um, so £62 million overall balance is very, very good. I'm hoping that um, that is going to keep increasing. And it's suggesting that it's going to drop down, but we're going to actually make a profit this season because £48 million will be an increase in what we had last season. So for me, I'm pretty happy. As long as the finances sort of stay steady, I think we should get more wage budget next season. So we might be overspending right now, but down the line, it should be okay. One more thing to do before we get into the group stage, though, is rename some Patreon players from last season's youth intake. Uh, some of the best names I've ever come across in the Patreon player name this time around. So let's get around to some of these. Young striker Rich Hunt. He is now going to be known as Thad Davies going forward. So thank you, Thad. Massively appreciate that. You love to see it. And hopefully you score plenty of goals for us. At 15 years old, by the way, you're already making appearances for the under-21 team in Gibraltar. That's mad. Rob Walter as a centre midfielder who's looking very, very good. And he's also got one goal for the under-21s at the age of 15, which is fantastic. Uh, he's now going to be known as Riley Cruz. Sounds like a film star name, doesn't it, Riley Cruz? I feel like he'd be in a Hollywood film or something. We now move on to two of probably the best names we've got for any Patreon player uh, that we've ever had across any save. So Ken McKee is going to be renamed, and this is fantastic, Suave, if I can spell it right, Suave 
de ballet, de ballet, de ballet, de ball, suave de ball. I don't, suave de ball. I love it. What a fantastic name. And then finally, our young centre back, Connor Moss, also making appearances for the under 21 team, which is mental. Uh, I can't decide if suave de ball or Juan Fitzber Lappi is, uh, is, is a better name. I mean, they're both fantastic names. Suave de ball, Juan Fitzber Lappi. I love it. So welcome all of you guys to the club. Massively appreciate it and I massively appreciate your support on the Patreon as well. If you guys want to get involved in the Patreon for future youth intakes, etc, etc, uh, we'd love to have you involved. There's a link down in the description to get signed up to that one. Anyway, all the news is done now. Let's get into this Champions League group stage draw. We are one of the first seeded teams to this because we won the Europa League last season. So hopefully we get to avoid some very big, impressive teams in that one. I will also say Southampton are a first seeded team because they won the Premier League last season. Don't be fooled into thinking that's an impressive achievement though, because it's not basically. Uh, Southampton probably are the best team in the Premier League because when I made this save file, I messed things up. I accidentally included some edited data which moved the top Premier League clubs to the Netherlands and the top Dutch clubs to the Premier League. So it messed things up a little bit, which is why it's behind me right now. But you'll see Liverpool in a minute have the Dutch flag next to their name, not the English flag. So um, that's my bad, but that's why you'll see some clubs have the Dutch flag next to their name when they're actually based in England. Anyway, let's draw the first group then, uh, or the first teams in the first group, I should say. Uh, we've put into Group D which is exciting. Uh, that means nothing right now because no other clubs have been drawn yet. But as we look at the teams in the second tier, right, or the second seeds, right, Barcelona, Valencia, we can't get either of those clubs because they are Spanish, so we can't be drawn against them, which is quite nice. But Man City, Man United, uh, Borussia Dortmund, Borussia Mönchengladbach, FC Porto, and Inter Milan. We could come against any one of those six clubs. So let's find out who we're going to get I'd like Porto. Porto seemed like the easiest team to beat. Uh, but we did beat Bruce Munch and Gladbach last season, of course, in the Champions League. So, at uh, the Europa League, sorry, I should say. So, I wouldn't mind playing against Bruce here, Munch and Gladbach. We are going to get Manchester United instead. Of course, they've got Netherlands next to their name because of that editor data that I mentioned about. So, that's going to be tricky to play against them, I reckon. In terms of third seeded teams, Napoli, Arsenal, Leipzig, Monaco, Kiev, Rangers, Lille and Young Boys... I'll be honest, um, we can't have Arsenal because they're in the Netherlands, but we, I would like them actually because we beat them twice last season in the Europa League. I reckon we could take any of these teams on and win actually. I'm, I'm comfortable against any one of these teams. Let's see who we get then. We get Napoli. If there was one team I did want to avoid out of that, it probably would have been Napoli, if I'm honest with you. So a very tough group to start off with. And then in terms of fourth seeds, we've got uh, Club Bruges, Midgieland, Copenhagen, Norwich, uh, Huesca, Legia Warsaw, Red Star Belgrade and Malmo. Again, I don't really care who we come up against of these teams. I think we could batter any one of them. And we're going to get Club Bruges from Belgium, who actually probably are one of the hardest teams from that. So we've got a very tough group of Bruges, Napoli and Man United. Get through that and we'll be doing well, I reckon. And following that draw, Shomleya is now ready to leave the club to go to Osasuna for £8.5 million up front and then 11.25 down the line. Fantastic. You'll love to see it. Accept that. Brilliant work. So today we're going to go and play Granada right now and then we'll come back for the Napoli game, which is the first game of the Champions League group. Oh, OK. Big bid coming in for Lukau. £15 million from Leipzig. And if I'm honest with you, I don't want to lose him. I like Lukau. Um, so I'm going to reject it, right? But he is cross with me still because of the whole contract debacle, which is a little frustrating. But uh, that was actually going to be the that would have been the biggest transfer fee we'd ever received if we'd accepted that. Biggest before that was 11 million pounds for JD Meekin, and JD Meekin now plays for RB Leipzig uh, and doing rather well for them, playing uh, infrequently but getting a decent amount of goals. So I'd like to bring Meekin back to our club at some point in the future. But um, yeah, that would have been the biggest transfer fee we'd ever received if we'd accepted it. But we're not going to because one, it's not enough. And two, we love Lukau too much. He's an integral part of our team. In the meantime, this is the team that's going to be taking on Granada today. Four at the back with Krenta in goal. Uh, new signings, Varol and Rask at the full back positions with Rubens and Araya through the middle. Catania joins up with new signing Marat in the centre of midfield with Paolo Turner on the left. Ferdinand through the middle, Perez on the right, and Sione leading the line. 
fine. Currently got an injury to Terziev. Terziev would normally be playing on the left-hand side and Paolo on the right, but Terziev currently injured, which is why you're not seeing him in the starting lineup today. So as kickoff is upon us for the third game of the season, we need to be getting a good result here today. Following that defeat to Valencia, we want to bounce back with a big win and show the Spanish footballing world that we're not just a one-season wonder who can win Europa League by potluck one season. We're going to qualify for the Champions League this season. We're going to get top four and we're going to play really good football. Something along those lines, basically. But uh, it should be decent as Varel gets on the ends of the loose ball. Sione puts it in the back of the net. And what a great way to start the game. So one highlight, one goal for us. You love to see it. Hopefully we can get a couple more in today's video. Uh, Sione has started off this season a little bit slow. He uh, missed a few big chances in the game against, uh, obviously, uh, Juventus, sorry, last episode in the Europa Super Cup. Uh, obviously scored today and scored in the first game of the season, but for the amount of goals he scored last season, right, he has missed a good few chances so far this season, particularly against Valencia. So I'm looking for him to have a response today too, and I guess he's already shown it by scoring a very early goal in this game. Not much going on, though, in terms of highlights. Already into the second half, I think there's been two highlights in this entire game so far, and Considering that we're winning, that's pretty good for us, but we would like to score some more goals. Getting a couple more goals under our belt would be fantastic, but that might involve changing around some personnel in the attacking midfield. And I think with 25 minutes or so to go with no highlights in this first uh, second half yet, what we're going to do is bring Kenneth Gisk on up front to join Sione. And I think maybe this is the sort of shape we need to be looking to move towards as we get better. So Gisk will come on as a deep lying forward there. Um, I also kind of want to bring Paolo Turner across for Perez. Perez not having the best of games right now on a 6-8. So let's bring him off for Stransky and then swap Stransky and Varela because Varela can also play left wing quite nicely. So we'll give these guys a go in those roles as well and see what they can do for 25 minutes of the game or so. Uh, Paolo Turner gets the ball into Rask but is offside so that was just a weird highlight for the tactical changes. Real Sporting Gahana 5-0 up against Zaragoza, 5-1 now against Zaragoza but we need to be scoring goals like that. We've had 17 shots today but only 5 on target so it does suggest to me we're not really having good quality shots out there, but at least we are winning as Paolo Turner puts it on the noggin of Sione. And Sione, with his third goal of the season, doubles our lead here with only 10 or so minutes to go. Nice stuff, nice work. You love to see it. Fingers crossed we can just keep going and uh, get the three points across the line, keep the clean sheet as well. And by look to things, that is exactly what we have done. So a very professional performance today. Pleased with that. You love to see it. Right then, as I say, we're going to go and play international break and rail Zaragoza. And then I'll be back with you in just a moment's time for the game against Napoli in the Champions League. So we managed to dispatch of Real Zaragoza 3-1. A fantastic win for us there with Idrissa Ferdinand scoring a penalty and then Sione scored a goal either side of the half-time break to secure a 3-1 victory. In other good news, we are no longer bottom of the La Liga commercial income table. With 2.6 million in commercial income, we are ahead of Granada, which is fantastic. And surely we're only going to shoot up this table now that we've won a Europa League and are in the Champions League this season. I think next season this will go up by an awful lot. I'd like to see us in the top 10 for next season. Maybe not quite top 10. We might not go up that high because our reputation, I don't think, is going to increase that quickly. But it would be good to actually get, you know, in excess of £10 million in commercial revenue. We are never going to be quite like Real Madrid or Barcelona. If we kept playing with save for 50 years, we might do. But it's a long, long time before we're anywhere near that sort of money. So if we can eventually compete with Valencia and Sevilla, maybe not even Atletico to be fair, just Valencia and Sevilla at some point, that would be good. In the meantime, this is the lineup that we're going to go for for the game against Napoli. That favoured five at the back for European fixtures. Krenta obviously stays in goal with Izquierdo, Lukau and Araya in the back. Of course, we can't play Rubens because he got a straight red card in the game against uh, Juventus in the Europa Super Cup. So that was not so good for him. He misses, I think, three in a row. Oh no, just one game. Just one game, actually, by the looks of things. It might go up to three in a row. I'm not too sure, but he's definitely missing this one, so we'll miss him definitely. Uh, Stransky is going to start at left wing back on the grounds that Varel can't quite play left wing back yet, apparently. Uh, he probably can do, and I am training him to do that. But right now, I think Stransky might be the better bet 
at that left wing back role. Rask plays on the right hand side. He's very good at playing in that right wing back role with Catanio and Noak just ahead of them in those centre midfield spots. Idrissa Ferdinand obviously keeps his position as well as Gisk and Sione lead the line. So as kickoff is upon us here today, we make history for our first ever appearance in a Champions League group stage game. Of course, in real life, uh, Lincoln Red Imps are pretty much in the Champions League every single season because they always win the Gibraltar National League. Uh, but they go into the very early preliminary rounds of the Champions League and always end up losing the first few rounds. They lost a Celtic a few years ago, didn't they, and things like that. So they get to play some big teams, but never get into the group stages, obviously. But now they are in the group stages, and we've nearly scored an early goal there against Napoli with a great header from Gisk just being too close to the keeper, unfortunately. The highlight is continuing, though, and Stransky looks for Gisk again, can't find Gisk. And will the highlights still continue? It does. And we win possession back again as Sione is this time through. His shot blocked. I mean, I'm not quite sure what this highlight was for because we didn't really have a good, a good chance there. Um, but three shots early on there. I guess it shows we're testing the Napoli defence. Now, this will be a good barometer of how successful we are going to be this season, I reckon. I think at the minimum, we should be expecting third in the group. I think we can be better than Club Bruges, and I think we should be beating them. So, minimum of third to drop into the Europa League. Uh, but I would like to go into the Champions League later stages, if I'm honest with you. And I think we should be beating Napoli. I think if we want to do that, we should be beating Napoli. Man United might be a bit of a different question, but Napoli, yes, they are very difficult and a good team to play against, but I think we should have enough about us to get ahead of them and beat them. We've come very close today with a few chances already. Sione does finally put it in the back of the net. You love to see it. He gets it in there. Uh, second time of asking after his first shot was blocked. But a great way to score the opening goal of the Champions League group stage for us. And we go 1-0 up. Brilliant work, Sione. His header was actually going well wide. The defender sort of put it back in his path for him. And Sione just scored the goal. So that is now six for the season for Sione. You love to see it. Fantastic work from him. I think we need to try and get Gisk playing a bit more. We need the two strikers playing together. And this is why I think in that four... 2-3-1. Uh, we need to make it a 4-2-2-2, two, 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 I guess, to an extent. Play two strikers rather than Adresa Ferdinand. As Catanio just squeezes that one in underneath the crossbar, just above the keeper as well. Brilliant stuff. 2-0. So great for Catania to get himself on the score sheet. He is a fantastic, fantastic midfielder for us. So happy with him. Our midfield is so strong now. I'm really happy with that midfield. Catania, Nowak, we've got uh, Mark... What's he called? Markab? Mark, 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 Mark Hab? What's he called? I can't remember his name now. The guy from Turkey. You know who I mean. We signed him as well for a lot of money. Uh, we've also got Paolo Turner through the middle. He can play. Not Paolo Turner. Paolo Turner's a winger, but can play centre mid. Um, basically, I can't talk today. Um, it's all edited out, but I've, I've done quite a lot of takes of various different bits of me talking. Um, I've lost all ability to talk and clearly think about my team as well. I still can't think. Tyson Brown, that's the one. Got Tyson Brown, he's very good. Got there in the end. Caramarco too. Our centre mids are really solid this season. So I'm really pleased with all of that. Um, it's gone from one of our weakest areas to potentially the strongest area that we've got actually, I must say. Very pleased with the additions that we made. Um, and of course our back line is much stronger too. We are a much better team than we were last season as Yusuf Demir comes forward for Napoli. Napoli look to get a ball in the middle. They need to try and get a goal back sooner rather than later if they want to try and pick up anything from this game. And they're looking dangerous now. Offside? No offside anyway because it's gone behind for a goal kick. You love to see it. Our centre-backs are not looking brilliant, I must say. Uh, two players on a 6.6 .6 and Brian Araya on a 6.9. The back line looking a little shaky, but I guess... They've not had to do, actually I say not do too much. They've had to do more than Napoli's back line right now because they've had more shots Napoli uh, than we have had. But a good clearance there from the corner as Sione races forward. Can he find the ball to Gisk? He can, but Gisk can't quite get on the end of it, unfortunately. It was a poor pass in the end from Sione. And instead, it's Napoli now on the attack as Napoli look to come forward. Come on, let's stop them. Please stop them. We have done. Nice tackle, Ferdinand. Dropping very deep there to make the challenge. But you love to see that sort of teamwork and commitment from him. But still, Napoli look to come forward. And I feel like there is going to be a goal at the end of this highlight. It's gone on long enough. It feels like a goal highlight to me. And it feels like a Napoli goal highlight for me as well as... Oh, it's not a goal. We are very fortunate. But straight from the goal kick, there is a highlight which we lose possession of again. 
There's definitely a Napoli goal coming here. There is definitely a Napoli goal coming here, and I do not like it. Although we have one possession back. Nowak back to Lukau. Lukau into Izquierdo. Izquierdo, come on, lad. Show me what you can do. Into Stransky. Stransky. Can he find a ball forward? He does. Can he win to second ball back? Sione shoots. Sione scores. You love to see it. Fantastic stuff. And we've gone 3-0 up. Three points are coming home with us today. And could we maybe make it four as Sione finds Gisk and Gisk finds the back of the net? You love to see it. We have torn Napoli a new one today. Okay, this makes me confident. This makes me very confident going forward in the Champions League. Uh, we've really shown ourselves in a great light here today. All we have to do is beat Club Bruges and United and we'll be fine. We'll be fine. So what a fantastic episode today. Uh, technically three wins. You saw two of them. One was off camera, obviously, to try and make this episode a reasonable length, obviously. But uh, I am very happy with the start of this season. Keep this up and we could be on for another great season. We get two and a half million pounds for winning a game in the Champions League group stage. That is mental. I think it was about half a million if we won one in the Europa League. An extra two... That is so crazy how much money there is in the Champions League. Of course, couple that with the eight and a half million pounds we've got from Sean Leia, we now have 75 million pounds in the bank. We started off today's episode on 60. You'd love to see it. Fantastic work. Very, very happy there. What, I'm, what I might do, actually, just so there's no red, I might just adjust the wage budget right like that. And then there's no red there that makes me feel bad about anything. We've got enough money to pay for the wages right now. You'd love to see it. Okay, brilliant. Excellent work. We're going to come back next time for the first Man United game and Espanyol. We'll do those two games next episode and then probably the episode after that we'll end up doing maybe a triple header. We always seem to play Real Madrid and Barcelona in a row. I don't understand how it always happens that we do. Um, so next episode, Man United, Espanyol. The episode after that, I would imagine Club Bruges, uh, Real Madrid and uh, Barcelona. So thank you ever so much for watching today's episode. Hope you guys have enjoyed it. And of course, if you have done, make sure you do drop a like on today's video for me and subscribe to the channel if you're new around here. And I will see you next time. Have a good one. Goodbye.